Tennis Garden Club. I'm Pam. And I'm Wendy. So good to see you again today. Yes, thanks for coming back. Um, we are very excited about our episode today. Well, we're always excited, aren't we? Yeah, we, are. <laughs> we are. We're an excitable bunch, yeah. but that's because we love gardening and we love to share all of mm -hmm. our expertise and our ideas with our, right. our viewers for the Botanist Garden Club. That's right. There's so many things in gar the gardening world and some things just never get old. Mm -hmm. Some information you need repeated over and over again. Yes. And bees are definitely part of that information that needs to be put out there every single time and every single moment we get. Yes. Bees in the garden mm -hmm. are very important. Actually, pollinators yeah, in the garden. True. And you might be asking yourself, well, why bees? Why why even pollinators? Why should I attract them to my garden as a gardener? Well, first of all, let's define what we mean by, well, we know what we mean by bees, but what about pollinators? Oh my gosh, there's so many different kinds. Yeah. There are moths, there are natural bees, or what do they call them? Wild, Wild bees, as bees. opposed to honeybees. Yeah. There's yeah. bumblebees, bumblebees yeah. there's hummingbirds, and moths, and, I mean, all yeah. of them. Ladybugs. Some, yeah, ladybugs. Mm -hmm. Some are more efficient than others, mm -hmm. but what we want to do in the garden is attract pollinators. And mm -hmm. bees specifically, because we know that they are on the decline, and we want mm -hmm. to make safe havens for them in our yard. Exactly. So it's of utmost importance. Right. And when we're talking about pollinating, basically what happens, especially, well, in the case of bees, is a bee will go to a flower because it's searching for food or for pollen, for nectar, and it'll get pollen stuck on all the little hairy parts of its legs, and then she flies to another flower and deposits, unbeknownst to her probably, the pollen there. And so what's happening is those bees and those pollinators are helping your garden grow mm -hmm. by pollinating the plants, and it is a win-win deal for right. sure. So they're completely attracted by the pollen and the mm -hmm. nectar that is that's on right. those flowers. Uh, it's exactly. funny, you can know that, but there's part of me that thinks, well, is it the color, is it mm -hmm. fragrance? But no, it is the pollen and the nectar that they are Absolutely. Going to. That's what they're doing. Their right. livelihood. That's right, it's their livelihood. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, of course, when you have pollinators, bees coming to your garden, one of the most important things you want to remember, of course, is please don't use any type of pesticides in your garden. Um, there are so many natural, yeah, organic solutions. options, mm -hmm. solutions that you can use, and the pesticides do nothing to help those pollinators. In fact, it is a big issue and it's a big problem, and it's killing insects all over the world. So we just want to not do that if possible. Yeah, create a safe haven for them. We actually have tip sheets on the botanist.com website, www.botanist.com. Go to the garden club up top, and then underneath that is tip the, sheets. Tip sheets. Click mm -hmm. on that and you'll see natural garden solutions. And mm -hmm. there are some great recipes in there. So you can make your own, you know, aphid removers and right. pest removers. But they are all things that you'll find in your in your house, which right. is really quite good. Quite exactly. handy. Exactly. And not damaging to the pollinators. Mm -hmm. That's very important. So that's a good start. But right. one thing you really want to make sure that you have in your garden as well is a little place for them to sit down and get some water. Yes. A small dish with a nice flat rock in it so mm -hmm. they can slip off the, not slip off the side, but <laughs> down the side and get a little bit of water so they can take that back to the hives yes. and use it for whatever yeah. that they might need it for. Mm -hmm. But it's really great to have that set up in your garden in a couple of different stations, I think. It's a good idea. idea. And not to worry, I know that people say, oh, standing water in the garden that's you know can go stagnant, it's not a good idea. But we're talking about a small dish. Very small. You can make it quite decorative. It can even be on your patio table or something. It's just a place for those insects to land and get a drink of water. Because like every other living organism on this earth, they need water just as much as they need food. So it's exactly. an important thing. Uh, to help them with. Mm -hmm. And something in my garden, I tend to leave everything in my garden until the very last minute, which means early spring. Although this year was different because right. a neighbor helped me clean up. It was very unusual. Mm -hmm. But it, what you want to do is keep everything as it is. So any of the stems that have gone golden, that are hollow inside, those are actually potential spots where bees or other pollinators can find their way inside, mm -hmm. have little homes for over the winter. And if you leave them just that little bit longer, and even in the early spring or later spring when you need to take them down because your new shoots are coming up, well then be sure you don't burn them. Just cut them down, take them over, compost them, and then mm -hmm. any insects that did find their way in there over winter to, for a home, right. they can find their way out. Just a little way to sort of keep them mm -hmm. in your mind and keep a safe space for them all, all year round. That's right. just like in the spring. Now of course, you're gonna also want to be planting bee-friendly flowers. And, you know, as we mentioned earlier, what attracts bees to flowers? Well, it's two things. It's nectar and it's pollen. So you'll want to look for plants that can supply 
either one of those things or hopefully both of those things at once. Right. In our catalog, we actually list the uh, plants that have the attractions, mm -hmm. uh, whatever properties. they might be, properties, thank yeah. you, as a big B, a big solid B in there. So you can look for that, mm -hmm. like the letter B. That's right. And that'll give you a bit of a clue and you can look for those and mm -hmm. spot light a few things from the catalog in your garden. Exactly. You can look online too. You can mm -hmm. actually do a search on our website for bee friendly plants. And keep in mind too, try to plant them in different areas of the, your garden. And in multiples too. Yes. Yeah, I thought it was brilliant actually because if you think about it, if you plant like a nice little grouping, say of the liatris that we are having mm -hmm. in our garden, in our catalog, plant a grouping of five of those and then plant another grouping of five over in an area where say that gets a little more sunshine. Mm -hmm. And truthfully, they will bloom a slightly sooner than the ones that are, say, in a shadier location or in a windier location. Right. Though there is a difference. I know right. in the uh, fall, when you mm -hmm. plant your fall bulbs, in the springtime when they come up, depending on where they are in the garden, you'll see differences. Yes. And enough so that what happens is you've got some that are fully open mm -hmm. and accessible for the bees, and then others that will bloom just a slightly bit later so right. that they can get to those ones as well. Right. It's kind of like an all-you-can-eat buffet. <laughs> That's right. It really is. It's like you do a little bit of this, mm -hmm. and then you're going to try a little bit of that, and then they'll go over to that area of the garden. And trust me, they tell their friends. They do. Bees are, are notoriously famous for that. So if you have an area where you've got some plants that are attracted to bees, then the bees will come, and it doesn't take long. And it's really quite wonderful. Now, you had a very good point, Yuri. We were talking about this. If you're short on space, uh, to plant bee-friendly plants. Well, the tip is go up. That's right, go, go high. Up. Yeah, and use containers and things like that because if you have a container that's close to the ground, well, set it up on a nice little ledge somewhere and it's up high. And then also plant things in containers that will grow up the side of the wall. Exactly. That or are good pollinators. Hanging baskets. Hanging baskets. There's yes, another absolutely. great option to get those pollinators to come to your garden as well and to feed them. Exactly. Parts of those, when you think about all the different plants that you can use for these beautiful bees, is keep in mind that there are all sorts of different types of bees too. So if you've got plants or flowers that are, say, a deep well in them, they've got that throat that goes down a long way, mm -hmm. make sure you've got a few of those for the hummingbirds and others. Mm -hmm. And then some that are short and sort of wide open, so the bees or the pollinators will have no trouble getting to them. And that's something I didn't really think mm -hmm. about until I did a bit more research. Mm -hmm. So provide them with different types of flowers that are easier and uh, exactly. for them to get in. And besides offering, or excuse me, showing you on our website and in our catalog, the bee-friendly plants, we made it kind of easy for you because of course this year, again, we're offering the Botanist Bee Garden Collection. And oh, it yeah. is, what a great collection this yeah, is. it is. And each year we'll do something different because mm -hmm. we want to give people the ideas and give them different plants that they can plant. Right. But the liatris we mentioned a little bit earlier. Yeah. I wonder if it's liatris or liatris. I'm not sure, but you know what? It doesn't matter. Because they're pretty darn they're cool. Beautiful. Look, they're beautiful. I just love them. They're, yeah. they're like a bottle brush of mm -hmm. uh, purple flowers. Yeah. And they're just so attractive to the bees. They'll just zoom right to they it. They will. And interesting with them, too, is that they actually bloom sort of uh, different stages so mm -hmm. the pot, top part will be open and the bottom part will start to open exactly. so when they're finished on the top they can go down for a bit fresher food a little bit towards the bottom right and right. they're so pretty they oh, are and i think there's like 50 yes. in this collection so yeah, you can 50. do that yeah, you can do groupings like you mentioned earlier yeah. plus one of my favorites in the collection is the echinacea purpurea magnus oh, yeah. cone flower again a total Awesome. Magnus, it should be actually Echinacea purpurea magnet. Oh, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> because the <laughs> bees mean. just are all over them and they yeah. love them and they last so long. This is a nice summer blooming variety, lasts well into the fall, yeah. very, very pretty, very easy to grow. And because it's a perennial, it's going to be coming back again. Year after year after year. That's right. Yeah. And exactly. they don't mind a little bit of drought too. So not mm -hmm. the first year. First yeah. year, take care of them totally. Yeah. Second year, you'll find they just don't need that much care and attention. Yeah. They yeah. really do look after themselves the yeah. bees and love them. And this is also a great collection to give to a fellow gardener or maybe a new gardener that you know that wants to sort of support bee culture in the world. This is great because it is very easy to plant, very easy to grow, really good for most zones in Canada. I think it's rated zone three to nine, all of the plants in the collection. Oh, really good. So yeah, keep that in mind. And of course it's on sale. So that makes it even easier to make your decision to uh, plant them in your garden. Good. That's lots of information to digest. Right. So the bees <laughs> digest that pollen and that nectar. That's right. And you know we love to give away a little something every single week, mm -hmm. and today is no different. So we have a question for you, and that question is, what attracts bees to 
flowers. Mm -hmm. We definitely gave that a couple of we times. We did, yes. absolutely. Yeah. And so send your answer to that question to gardenclub at botanis.com. Okay. And tomorrow we will be doing a random draw for three lucky winners. And what are they going to get? Three, uh, three people will receive a $10 gift card each. And that's pretty nice. That'll go towards this definite bee connection. Yes, collection. absolutely. Or you can save it and use it in the future. Mm -hmm. And of course, please do remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Give us a big thumbs up if you like this video. And make sure you turn on the notifications as well. That little bell in the upper right hand corner, which means anytime a new video comes out from Botanis, once you've subscribed, you'll get a notification. That's nice. And we'll still send our emails out, but it's yes. really nice to have that additional uh, notification. Yeah, additional yeah. reminder. Mm -hmm. Well, this has been fun it's been being fun. with you, <laughs> Wendy, here in the Botanist Garden Club. We hope that your spring out there is starting soon and that you'll start to see those bees in your garden as well. So until next week, take care and we'll see you soon. Bye for now. Bye-bye.